many new claims that the Benghazi terror attack was pre-planned and was sophisticated as a new witness comes forward on the assault that killed four Americans, including our ambassador, Chris Stevens. During a 60 Minutes interview, a former British soldier described the frantic scene that night when a Libyan guard who he had trained called him as a terrorist began to storm the consulate. Watch this. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, we're getting attacked. And I said, how many? And he said, they're all over the compound. And I, I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. And uh, I said, well, just keep fighting. I, I'm on my way. Leslie Marks is a syndicated radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor. Scotty Nell Hughes is with the Tea Party News Network. Uh, ladies, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, and, you know, we, we bring this to you because, A, you know, now 60 Minutes, the venerable news program, Sunday Night News program, is putting a lot of focus on this story. Uh, and they got two very significant people to talk about it. Here at Fox News, we've been covering this story for a very long time. At times, we've been criticized for continuing to cover this story. Uh, Leslie, now it is a, you know, it continues to be a broader issue. And, and another very strong news network also wants some answers here. Well, I, I, don't, I, I don't find it uh, anything odd that any uh, network or the American people want answers. Um, I don't also, but I do find it odd that we have unconfirmed, uh, not corroborated by uh, the British military, uh, by the Pentagon, uh, by the State Department, any of the claims that this witness has made. In a court of law, he actually probably would not even be allowed uh, to give his uh, testimony. So my, my problem is, did CBS do this just purely for ratings? Because, you know, when I went for my master's in broadcast journalism, you've got to verify those facts before you put them out there uh, on national television. So well, this uh, CBS is a, you know, this is a former made, British some officer who trained the individuals who were working at that embassy. We also know that it has been very difficult for these people to talk. We're still trying to figure out all of the reasons why the witnesses that were there uh, and the people that work for the embassy have not spoken. Uh, we all watched Gregory Hicks as he sat there. He clearly corroborated mm -hmm. much of what was said in this story. So I would argue that there has been some corrob corroboration on mm -hmm. what we heard from these two individuals. Uh, before I go to Scotty, let's, let's play another piece of the, of the uh, Benghazi story on 60 Minutes last night. This comes from a U.S. official who claims that he warned Ambassador Stevens that he was not safe. Watch this. I made it known in a country team meeting, you are going to get attacked. You are going to get attacked in Benghazi. It's going to happen. You need to change your security profile. Shut down. Uh, shut, down uh, shut down operations. Move out temporarily or, or change locations within the city. Do something to break up the profile because you are being targeted. They are, they're, they're watching you. The attack cycle is such that they're in their planning, final planning stages. Wait a minute. You said they're in the final planning stages of an attack on the American mission in Benghazi. It was apparent to me that that was the case. You reading, told us reading all these other uh, um, uh, attacks that were occurring, I could see what they were staging up to. It was, it was obvious. Yeah, I mean, th you know, th there's nothing that surprising here. Uh, you know, we know that the, the British ambassador, uh, the embassy was attacked, and they pulled out. Uh, there were reports, according to these uh, gentlemen, this is Andy Wood that you just heard from, that there were al-Qaeda fly, uh, flags flying in the area. Uh, Scotty, you know, the idea that this is, this is something, you know, tr truly new is, is questionable, and I think it corroborates a lot of what we've been hearing all along. No, Leslie, it's time for you to actually start admitting the truth that this administration and the Secretary of State completely screwed up when it came to Benghazi. Not only did they screw up, they purposely tried to cover it up the next day by going on and blaming it on a YouTube video. And they're hoping that the truth does not continue to come out. And thanks to great journalism, we're hearing more about the truth of Benghazi from the nightly news than we are from the hearings that happened a few months ago, which is not fair to the people. It's not fair to these four dead Americans that were literally killed without anybody wanting to help them despite their cries for help. They had made, yeah, they had made repeated cries for help for increased security. Those were uh, turned down, Leslie. Uh, you know, and, and I guess all of this, and the reason that we're talking to both of you about it is because it is, it's going to be politically relevant, mm -hmm. and it may be politically relevant mm -hmm. for Hillary Clinton down the road, who we also remember shook her hands in the air and said, what difference does it make, whether it was just a bunch of crazed individuals that overran or something that was planned and plotted? And I'm paraphrasing a bit of what she said there, but you all remember mm -hmm. it well. Leslie? 
Well, yeah, that is a great paraphrase in taking one sentence uh, a, a bit out of context. When we is look it? at no. uh, what does it? What, 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 <laughs> no, but when we when we look at who did when we look at who did this, um, are there Al Qaeda factions uh, in Libya? Yes, there are, and in every Muslim and perhaps every country in the world, uh, the information that we have thus far is that this was not just Al Qaeda. Uh, there are still questions and discrepancies as to whether this was an opportunistic or a well-executed attack. And I do think whether it was a well-executed or opportunistic attack, we need to look at the reality. The reality is that during the Bush administration, 22 embassy workers were killed, seven attacks on U.S. embassies. This is not about who is president left or right. When I lived in Pakistan and was adopting my son and at the embassy in Islamabad, I was terrified, but not because George Bush was president. I certainly wouldn't have blamed him, because no matter how much security we have, things like this can happen. And let's keep in mind, Ambassador Stevens was the one yeah, that but, yeah, wanted but to Leslie, be in Benghazi. Leslie, Leslie, let, let, let me jump in here for a second. That wanted to branch out from Tripoli to Benghazi. Let, let, let me just, you, you know, I mean, the fact remains that we know that they asked for additional security. Uh, you know, we, we know mm -hmm. that there were, you know, efforts to to reach out, to ring the alarm bell, to ask for extra security, and it is relevant. And there has been nobody apprehended in this case. The president stood in front of, uh, you know, at, at the White House in the Rose Garden and said, "Whoever did this will be brought to justice." Uh, Scotty, you know, that, that that's another very good reason to continue to investigate this story that a lot of folks don't seem to want to look into. And you can sit there and bring up the Bush administration because I know it's rare that you continue to blame Bush so many years later. But the reality of Nobody's the situation. Nobody's blaming Bush. No, if you, you heard just what blamed I said. Bush, and, and you just no, blamed I Bush, saying because Bush. it happened I during his administration. Said it, I that clearly it said, said it is not, not blame because it is here. George Bush. But the, it is not about the, the politics of the person in that office. But the key is in all of this, Leslie. Is this? They asked for help a month before there was a meeting where they sat there and laid out the entire plans that this compound, that this embassy was going to be under attack, had threats, and that night when the call for help went out and the soldiers wanted to go in and help, there was a call somewhere from this administration to. Stand down. We don't know who got, made that call, and whoever really? did does need to really? be made accountable. So yes, the troops they that went to go Spain, in. that were well, they they wanted to go in and help. The, 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 the stand down order is very controversial, but we do know that they didn't go. No. They did not go in and help. Tell me what soldier leaves another soldier on the battlefield. That is against what our Scotty, military is about. Scotty, Leslie, thank you. We will continue this conversation <laughs> again, uh, and I appreciate your being here. Thanks, ladies. All right, thank you.